welcome to another episode of Safety Glasses Required. In this episode, we're going to tackle enclosures part two. Hopefully you've checked out episode one where I talk about my metal 3D printer cabinet that I purchased from an industrial supply house. It's a repurposed industrial PC cabinet and holds my Maker Gear M2 and does a fantastic job. Now there are some drawbacks to using an all metal uh, in repurposed industrial PC cabinet. First, you really have to find one that fits your printer. Since you are buying industrial surplus, you really can't customize it easily without breaking out the welder. Second, maybe it doesn't really fit into your space. So if it, does, if it fits your printer, it may not fit the space that you have to put the enclosure. Finally, what if you have more than one 3D printer? You have to have a cabinet for each printer at that point. That gets a little clunky. So when I added my second printer, the Prusa i3 Mark II, I needed another enclosure. I kind of had a hunch that the Mark II wasn't going to be my last 3D printer and that I should plan for the future. So I used plywood and 2x4s to build my own customized enclosure. The enclosure behind me fits into a space where we previously had a shelving unit that held things like bottled water and on the very top other household cleaners and supplies, things like insecticides, bug sprays, that kind of stuff. Those I moved away, but I did continue to store our bottled water down below. So if you're short on space and you don't have room to add a bunch of industrial cabinets to your garage, then this is another option. Maybe your wife won't get so mad about adding more printers if you can kind of incorporate them into a space that doesn't displace other family things. So you might be wondering, why do you even need an enclosure in the first place? Check out part one of the series where I talk about why you even need a 3D printer enclosure. Basically, if you want to start printing any functional materials, things other than PLA, you're going to need a way to control the environment around your printer. So the nice thing about using plywood and 2x4s is that you can customize it to fit any shape. So what other things does a 3D printer enclosure need? You need a way to power the printer, so either a power strip or a way to pass power through or get the power cable through. You need a way to control temperature, ideally. Some enclosures might be small enough where the printer bed has enough uh, power uh, to kind of warm up the, the chamber on its own without requiring auxiliary heat. In both of my enclosures, I happen to use a uh, space heater, much like you'd use at your desk or uh, other small space to keep it warm. Uh, they're called my heats. There's a link down below. Very affordable. Uh, and then to control the temperature, I use a temperature controller on. But I did find this ink bird here on Amazon. It's actually linked in the other video, and the link will also be down below. This has a simple uh, controlled outlet. You set your temperature on it, and it controls whatever's plugged into it uh, to help maintain that temperature. So there's no wiring required like the other one. It has a nice housing. The other one required 3D printing a housing. Depends, I guess, where you want to put it. I'm pretty happy with the ink bird link is down below um, and right now I'm controlling the temperature to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, ideally for ABS and nylon that temperature would be higher but the problem with that is uh, your controls for the printers are also inside of here and they don't like to operate much above. So you might be able to push it a little bit beyond 100 but I found this to be a good reliable temperature for printing ABS and uh, my printers have been operating inside the cabinet for a while now with, without any issue. Other things you might like in your 3D printer enclosure is a way to, to store and uh, maybe even dispense filament. So above the printer here is a shelf where I store filament inside this container here. This container has a seal on it and it has a desiccant to keep the filament dry. On the other side here you'll see a container that holds our family's biking equipment, our helmets and locks and such. So like I said, it's really a multi-purpose shelving unit that now includes the printers and an enclosure for them. The printers in this cabinet are both controlled with smart outlets that are available from Amazon. TP-Link is the ones I use for this enclosure. That allows me to turn them off remotely if I see a problem that uh, I simply can't stop with Octoprint or if Octoprint stops responding, I can simply turn off the printer entirely. Not ideal, but it is one way to save a giant mess. Obviously, the printer's not cooling down the way it properly should there, so it's sort of a last resort. But it is one way to print remotely and give yourself another layer of protection. There's two printers in this cabinet now, and a Prusa i3 Mark II, which many of you have watched me assemble on the channel, and I've since added an Anycubic i3 Mega, also another great printer for a very affordable price. So what else does your enclosure need? Obviously, if you're putting it in a box like this, you need a way to be able to see. So I've added LED lights inside the cabinet that can be turned off. Let's 
so. The Prusa i3 Mark II is controlled using an Octoprint, and I've got a webcam mounted over here. I have not yet added a Octoprint to the i3 Mega. It's, it's something that's in the works. So another feature that I thought was pretty nice was I added basically like a drawer or a little shelf that pulls out here. This allows me to take parts off the printer as I'm removing them from the bed, maybe an area to remove supports. It also is a place to set like a spool of filament before when I'm changing filament or if I'm taking the printer apart or doing any kind of maintenance, this provides sort of a workspace here. Down below here I have another shelf where I store more family things, chargers for the power wheels and various electric toys. Well, this is extra filament. This is spare parts for the printers and the enclosure. All right, that's enough chit chat. Uh, at the end of the build video, I'm gonna show you how some things I would have changed, maybe some things I'll change in the future, but uh, enjoy the build video.
So what do I like about the enclosure? First, I like that it really hasn't changed how the garage works, so that we can still store things out here, and it didn't take up a lot of extra space. My wife really hasn't complained about it, so that's obviously a plus. So let's get down to a few things I don't like about the enclosure. First being that it, these doors, they're sim were simple to build, they serve their purpose of keeping heat in, but as you probably maybe can see here, they're getting a little scratched up. Uh, obviously that was a concern of mine, two doors sliding against each other. That's something I probably should have thought of, and I did. I 3D printed little nylon spacers up in the top and bottom of the tracks, thinking that would keep them spaced apart. But as, flex as flexible as these glass doors are, and they rub against each other, and uh, if a little bit of dust gets in here, that creates problems as well, and they basically scratch each other up. Also, when I designed it, the idea was to have not take the, the display off of the Mark II, take, leave it mounted in the stock location, or even bring it out front. There really hasn't, wasn't enough cord to bring it out uh, outside of the enclosure, so it's still inside, but there isn't enough room to even keep it in stock location without it hitting there. That's because I had originally intended on mounting the doors on the outside. Uh, I could have made the whole cabinet just a little bit wider, uh, but then it would have started to get a lot closer to where my wife parks her car, and I'm concerned, obviously, about that being a problem and not being able to fit in here when the car's parked. So this was the size I decided on. If I redo these doors, which I really, really want to do, I'll probably mount them to the outside and make them open in a different way or do something different than this so that they don't get scratched up and so that I can put the display and controller right on the back of the front of the Prusa. Really outside the door issue, I don't have any complaints. Uh, I think I might like to add uh, other ways of mounting cameras in there to do time lapses and, and whatnot. Maybe even a slider mechanism or something that can do really cool, you know, moving time lapses. Uh, but that's really not a complaint, it's just features I'd like to add. So for now, this will probably be the last video in the enclosure series. That doesn't mean that if I add a printer or get another printer that I won't have to build a new enclosure and then we'll see what part three is. Enjoy. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing so you don't miss any future content from Safety Glasses Required. Uh, let me know if you have an idea for some content. I'm thinking about doing more welding, TIG welding again, and uh, CNC work. Do you have a pro cool project, something you'd like to see me do? So I have some future content planned where I show my workbench. Somebody commented on social media. They'd like to see more how it works and some of the tricks that uh, are kind of built into it. It's a completely custom thing I built years ago and it uh, it would be it would be cool to share with you guys. So uh, be sure to subscribe uh, if you want to catch that video and uh, follow me on Instagram. I've been trying to post more regularly there for other projects I'm working on. I've um, been showing a lot with building the Open RCF1 car on there and I hope to get out a really cool video for that in the future here as well and hint some maybe some more uh, some more uh, stop motion uh, stop, those are always fun so thanks again and I hope you enjoyed it